Om Tat Sat, my humble prostrations to the all-pervading Brahman, to my worshipful Guruji, Swami Jyotirmanand Ji Maharaj, to Sage Narada and all other sages and saints, and to each of you divine soul watching today's satsang. So today we will be starting Sutra number 39 from the Narada Bhakti Sutras, Chapter 2, Glory of Supreme Devotion. Commentaries by my Guruji, Swami Jyotirmayanand Ji Maharaj, narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilananda. So let's get started on Sutra number 39. It is Mahat Sangatsu Durlabho Agamyo Amoghascha. Again, Mahat Sangastu Durlabho Agamyo Amoghascha. Meaning, but association with the great ones is difficult to attain since they are inaccessible to the majority of people. And at the same time, such association is infallible in its results. So very deep sutra. We will try to understand it deeper. Uh, and as you know, in the last few days, we have been covering the glory of uh, uh, a guru, a spiritual preceptor, and Sage Narada continues onwards on in this sutra. He says, it is difficult to find a spiritual aspirant. Very difficult because these days everybody's running to material wealth, money, pleasure, sense objects, etc. So it is also difficult to find a spiritual preceptor who can lead aspirants to the state of realization. So both are difficult. A good student is hard to find and a good guru is hard to find also because false teachers are many and blind are led by the blind figuratively speaking and so much time effort money is lost in this uh, so-called spiritual world but people it's all elusive it's all uh, everybody's running after some uh, ulterior motive you know and the aspirants are not sincere most of them they want an easy fix without doing much effort they want to get enlightened and then the gurus there are plenty of greedy ones out there who are not giving true knowledge and therefore it's the blind leading the blind and they all fall off the cliff so therefore on this holy path it is very hard to find a sincere disciple and a sincere guru therefore Katha Upanishad says many do not find opportune conditions to even hear about him so even just to know who that guru is is an act of divine grace but having heard of him many are not able to know him so even if they come in contact they are not imbibing his teachings they are not fully comprehending it is a wonder to find one who is able to teach the nature of brahman this is called brahma shrotriya brahmanisht somebody who is established in brahman and who can explain brahman also so it is a wonder to find one who has attained realization of brahman it's very 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 few people who are enlightened in this uh, earth plane and it is a wonder to find a skilled aspirant who has been taught by a knower of the self so just like we say uh, arjuna is hard to find and krishna is hard to find and when both come together you get the bhagavad gita so the same thing happens in uh, in our in our world as well it's very uh, material world it's very hard to find a sincere teacher and a sincere aspirant on this path so lord krishna voices the same opinion in the gita uh, and i will read that it's uh, chapter number 6 7 shloka number 3 chapter 7 shloka 3 those who know bhagavad gita or who have interest in it it says manushyanam sahasreshu kashchidyateti siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kashchin mam veti tatvataha so lord krishna is saying this okay he says hazaro manushyo mein koi ek meri prapti ke liye yatna karta hai out of thousands of people only a few handful uh, are trying to uh, achieve me or trying to find me or un yatna karne wale yogiyon mein bhi koi ek and out of those uh, people who are trying to find me hardly anybody just a very few uh, mere parayan hokar he comes to me and he tries to understand my real nature and what my 
uh, my, what my significance is, who knows me from the real tattva or my element. Very few people uh, are actually successfully able to do that. So it says among thousands of men, some perchance strive for perfection. Among thousands of those who strive, some perchance attain success. Among thousands of those who proceed on the path, some perchance know me in essence. So this is to, to tell you how a rare uh, self-realization is that doesn't mean it's impossible it just means it's rare just because the whole world is going towards material products so therefore we have to put in our sincere effort and it has to be unending tireless and once we start enjoying the process it becomes easier but initially it takes a lot of effort even men of accomplishment in art music science or secular branches of learning are rare as we know how much more so it must be to find men of aspiration seeking spiritual knowledge and enlightened men guiding them on that path to lead them to liberation. So therefore the role of a serious sadhak and a serious guru become very, very, very rare in this world. Precious diamonds are not found in abundance. Of course, you know that. Just as great men are not found in large numbers. So greatness in a sage is blended with humility. Moreover, sages are very humble. They don't have ego. So they will not go advertise themselves as big gurus. Uh, it is difficult for the masses to recognize and appreciate the greatness of a sage. As a result, sages become inaccessible to the masses. For this reason, it becomes this is why sage narada is saying it's so hard to find a, a genuine guru and i feel so blessed and thankful to um, the divine grace through whose grace uh, i came into contact with an enlightened guru who is putting me well on this journey of enlightenment also it's all god's grace and the guru's grace and the shastra's grace and the grace of my self-effort atma kripa all these things that i am teaching you, guiding you, sharing with you are my personal experiences. So in addition to all the knowledge that my guru has shared. So I hope uh, you can see the, the benefit and the depth of my uh, enthusiasm and taking you on this journey along with me so you can understand that um, you are following the right path. Because in this path, there are many, many distractions, many pitfalls, many false alarms, many things that will take us to the wrong path. Therefore, we need to be very, very cautious on this holy journey. Nevertheless, sages are recognized by spiritual aspirants who are drawn to them, just as bees are drawn to blooming flowers. So, But what still what happens is once people know of a guru, his fragrance smells, his, his fragrance is everywhere. And then people find out about him and they approach him just like we read that with the praniprateena pari prashnena sevayat so we we go and approach the guru respectfully and thankfully our guru is also very approachable and i try to be as approachable to anybody who needs any guidance uh, unconditionally of course and uh, and to share that knowledge so those who run from one guru to another never attain true mahat sangha because they are so busy trying to find a quick fix because they lack patience and perseverance in being guided by uh, on the spiritual path so this is like anything in life takes time how long does it take to become a doctor or an engineer how much studies are required and here we are trying to forever terminate the cycle of life and death and we want it just like that how can that happen we have to be able to put it put in the right right effort despite their vain satisfaction in having come into contact with many sages they continue to be ignorant such so such people do not grow they just have stories to tell you at parties oh i went here i went there i tried this i went to this meditation center and i've done this but internally they are not achieving anything of substance they just are nice. It's just nice party talk for them, for most people. But for a serious aspirant, he'll be quiet. He will not even discuss too many things. And he will talk to his guru, share his, his questions, or be in a satsang where they are learning from each other. Those kind of things serious aspirants do. Then there are others who are only drawn only to false teachers. And having been diluted, complain that the world is devoid of true preceptors. Again, because they're trying to get 
an easy fix enlightenment for 2800 bucks so that doesn't work like that but yet there are teachers who will sell it to you because you are the one who is who is becoming gullible and and they are out there to make money so therefore the blind leading the blind as uh, swamiji is guidely pointing out so be very um, careful on the holy path this is the path for the sincere not for name fame money etc even after a person has approached a great teacher he must continue to purify his heart in order to be a true recipient of his teaching so then just by getting the name and a mantra doesn't qualify you to be enlightened it's basically just the starting point then you have to put in the effort you have to uh, wake up in the morning do your sincere practice otherwise we will not grow he must seek guru kripa grace of the guru with patience and dedication it has to be consistent one who is truly attained association with an enlightened personality is supremely blessed so if you happen to um, enjoy that know that you are one of the lucky few with a lot of blessings from god directly to be putting you in contact with uh, authentic uh, lineage guru uh, disciple relationship even a moment's contact with such a sage is a blessing so infallible is the impact of satsanga or good association that is the point that sage narada is trying to make that how blessed we are to have access to such a divine sage and through uh, his blessings we are getting this direct uh, uh, satsanga with each other and that too daily I mean, what a beautiful blessing we have from his energy. Therefore, anyone who comes into contact with a flower receives its fragrance. The flower does not withdraw its fragrance from the wicked and release it in abundance for the virtuous. It believes in equanimity. Everyone gets it. But the people who are receptive will get the fragrance more because they are making an effort to get to it. Rather... So in the same manner, sages continue to import their wisdom and divine love to one and all. They don't have preference. They don't have a special student or a bad student. They are just there to give, like the rain example. If the uh, cup is inverted, then how will water go in, right? So that's the bottom line. The spiritual wealth possessed by sages is indivisible. Imparting their treasure of knowledge, they give away all they have yet continue to be ever full so they don't keep any secrets they don't keep any trade secrets they give everything they have because they want you to get enlightened just like they have received enlightenment this is the beauty of being a sadguru a true guru they become god to know brahman is to become brahman so therefore they want you to taste that same nectar that they are experiencing such is the mystery of the divine treasure of spiritual love and wisdom so what can you do for such a guru what can you give him your money and all that becomes so trivial at that point doesn't it so basically all you need to do is uh, shed tears of gratitude and to give yourself holy that's all just as a beautiful flower gives a gift of its beauty to the eyes of the beholder sages give their spiritual beauty to the mystic vision of aspirants the act of giving on the part of sages is spontaneous and yet infallible and unique that's why their blessings are so profound their teachings are so pure during satsanga the individual soul is lifted to the pinnacle of spiritual glory however all are not equally aware of the glory of satsanga due to varying degrees of mental impurity so therefore this is called adhikaritva or what level of qualification we are in so if somebody has a eighth grade qualification and you try to teach him college level mathematics he will struggle with it or he'll not be interested not understand therefore we have to grow to the stage and therefore we don't share the deeper secrets with just everybody qualification is important otherwise uh, and therefore purification is required qualification just as a sweet delicious pudding will not emit its sweet aroma when served in impure vessels right we have to therefore first cleanse the utensil clean it wash it then when we put something in eat and eat it the smell will come and the taste will also come so too the divine food of wisdom emits its wondrous aroma 
only in a personality that is rendered pure by spiritual discipline. So therefore, we need to first prepare ourselves, clean up our utensil before we can receive the wisdom. The grace of God continues to blow like a breeze over the ocean. But if a devotee's sails are not unfurled by the practice of devotion, he continues to drift aimlessly in the ocean of the world process. Therefore, he will not reach the destination. But if he is putting in his effort and setting his sails properly, the wind is blowing, now he is getting somewhere. Despite the fact that true spiritual preceptors are rare, one should not become discouraged in his quest. This is explained in the following sutra that we will cover tomorrow. This is Swami Nikhilananda. Om Tatsat.